In 2020, we made the huge decision to sell our home in the lower 48 and move north to Alaska to live a way of life free from the hustle and bustle of big city life. Join us here as we share our everyday adventures living free in Alaska. Uh, sunny out. Woo! About 10 or 11 degrees right now. Sun shining is so nice. Oh, I love it. Crystals falling from the sky makes it beautiful. But there's work to be done today. There's 10 to 12 inches of new snow on the ground. I plowed yesterday, but now I need to get on the snow blower and move the snow around. Beautiful outside. Oh my gosh. So on Saturday, we went for a snow machine ride out to a, a lake to go ice fishing. And we looked at the weather forecast and they said, oh, a couple inches of snow, two inches maybe. Well, that two inches turned into a foot. Mispredicted again. And I'm looking at, forward to the weather forecast and like on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday each, they're predicting two inches. I sure hope we don't get a repeat of December storms where we got a foot and a half each time. But we'll see what happens. You gotta keep up on it. So today is a snowblower day. Gotta get all dressed up and moving snow. Our normal plow rig are rangers in the shop. So with this recent snowfall, Gary has been having to clear it with the four-wheeler. So not the preferred way to clear the snow, but it works in a pinch. I'm walking over to our storage shed. I wanna have another pair of winter boots and I wanna grab them. We have a visitor on the property, and uh, I'll turn the camera around and show you that visitor. Right there, Mr. Eagle. Get zoomed in. He's there every morning. Checking things out. A couple of weeks ago, we had a tree fall down that was in front of the front of the house and ever since that tree came down Mr. Baldy has uh, took up a new residence in a different tree which I personally don't mind because it's out of sight for when I potty Sophie so safer place for Sophie to be with him perched up there Hey guys, we've made it to the Menard Center here, and this is where the Iron Dog Show is. You know, a chance to meet the racers, get a layout of the land, and see, you know, see the, the course, and some of the machines, and all that kind of stuff. I guess before the show started, they had the racer check-in, where the inspectors had to come and look at all the different snow machines that they have for the uh, race. So, we're gonna go inside and walk through the booths and see who we can meet and see, and, and uh, God, it's gonna be a lot of fun. This is for Iron Dog. The snow machine race that goes over a thousand miles out to Nome from here. It's awesome. So let's go inside to see what happens.
Hey guys, we're here with one of the racers for what's called the Expedition Class. They're not, the, there's two different classes, there's a Pro Class and an Expedition. The Pro Class are the guys that are just young and dumb and full of energy to almost not quite kill themselves, but get there as fast as they can. Expedition class is a little bit older gentleman. Well, maybe not all older smart, gentlemen, smarter, but smarter, a little bit slower, just to there to enjoy the ride. And this happens to be Randy Bedard. He's our he's our man at Polaris up in Hatcher Pass. This is this is the guy we bought all our machines from. So he's an awesome guy. And he's here showing us his sled um, for for the Iron Dog Expedition class. Uh, he's got a Polaris XCR 650. I'm sure he's built it up to his specs. He's got you know studded tracks and suspensions and all that he needs, all that he wants on this thing. And he's gonna kind of go through and show me some of the little extra stuff we got here. All right, so, Randy. So starting on the rear end here, so we we're, we're required to carry five pounds of tools. Okay. So this is full of tools. Not just lead weight, but actual tools. Yep, <laughs> tools over here tools as well, and these old iron dog bags that were used back in the days. Wow. Back in the 90s. So nice. I ended up so Randy's been around the iron dog circuit for a while. Yeah, since the 80s. Yeah. The 80s. Awesome. So then in gear, basically, is all my extra gear, such as your required extra long johns, your socks, uh, your another top, another bottom. Mm -hmm. Just in case you get wet, yep. we want you to be able to have safety gear to get dry right into. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, your toothbrush and your toilet trees. Day to day stuff. Yep. And then you always have to have an extra pair of gloves or mitts. Mm -hmm. We've got a big pair of climb mitts nice. that I carry in there in case nice. you get into a very cold situation. Mm -hmm. And moving back, there's a sleep a minus 20 sleeping bag oh, down. Wow. Yep. Wrapped in two layers of waterproofness. And then I, and this is me personally, I carry a little sleeping pad too. So if I am laying on the ground, I want to be dry. But now the idea is not to lay on the ground. I mean, the idea is, is to stop at a checkpoint. Oh, correct. Class. This would be like emergency. Emergency, okay. Get between checkpoints, yeah. weather moves in, somebody gets hurt, somebody breaks down. You got to have that survival. You got to be safe for this. What, what, what about food? Where's your food? So underneath the seat is my emergency stove. Mm -hmm. And I also have a pack of uh, food that is 3,600 calories. It's like emergency food. Oh, wow. So super food. high concentrated calories, yeah. a lot of Comes vitamins. From the marine industry. Ah. Yep, so that's packed in a really tight first aid kit, bivy sack for my sleeping okay. bag is all I need to see. Wow, great. You try and keep as much of the weight forward. Right. So the leveraging on the snow machine more through the bumps is in so the center. Not, so you're not canting the ring. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then up front, we carry, uh, we, got, we got to wear a special helmet. Right, we feed the, when, we, when we've been out trail riding. We feed some of these orange helmets come through, an and that's that's an iron dog helmet. That's an yeah. indication that that guy is an iron dog racer. Exactly. Yep. Extra gear here in the storage bag. I carry a, a strap rope for pulling people in case okay. you break down yep. or if, yep. if your machine goes in the water. Mm -hmm. okay. Got a strap here, and then behind the seven inch display gauge is all your. Um, Next water bottle, my head socks, toiletries. The stuff that you might need on the trail as quick as possible. Quick as possible. Yeah. Yep. I have a lot of that kind of same stuff in that my my seven S display area too. It's like all that stuff can go to too quick. quick. This is nice right here. There's gauntlets. Look at yeah. that. That keeps the nice the wind. The nice kind of gauntlets. <laughs> the ones that we ordered on Stacy's snow machine are crazy huge. So these are the ones that we actually somebody used to make those locally here in the world. They moved out of state. We, so we can't find those now. If I reached out to them there in Michigan, I can't find them anymore. Oh no, that's too yeah. bad. That's too bad. And then just a couple more things here in the handlebar yeah. bag. Yep. I have one of those. Got your 7 inch display gauge. I wish I had one of those. So it's already, already on there. In there from previous trips. Cool. Oh, okay. So day to day we're just So the, did, in. does the trail change much year to year? No. no it doesn't. No. Some Regardless of ice. Back ice, there might be deviations okay. because of pressure ridges. And that's what I was going to ask. On, 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 on lakes and rivers, and, and it's not that it's that's where mainly just the ocean where there be deviations. And that's out towards known. Correct. Is yeah. this your tracker beacon? Yeah. So we were required by Iron Dog to carry a tracker. This is a really cool device. It's been out for about the last um, 15 years. This allows the families to keep track in the in spectators keep track nice. of us on their computers on their device and that's both classes the pro class yeah. and your yep. exclusion class yep. so oh just, great just go to ironout.org and you click on tracker and you can track your favorite racer wow that's cool so you guys could track all the races too at irondog.org and select whoever you want to track and you see where they are in the 
what, 1,500 mile circuit? So uh, for us, the gnome is just over a thousand miles. Okay. And then the racers, they're actually going the, to go the up loop. to the Kotzebue Loop, and then go to Nome for the halfway, and then they turn back to Big Lake. Oh, they're coming all the so way. They're going to be 2,600 miles. 2,600 miles in, in, a, seven, in days. seven days. Oh my God. That's a lot of miles. Yeah, it's a lot of pounds. Wow. So in that 2,600 miles, what happens to these sleds? They get used very hard. <laughs> <laughs> Some more than, like if I were to go out and ride my sled for 2,700 miles. Yeah. I would show none of the wear and tear that those races would show. Because they're, they're hitting it three times speed. Yeah. They're hit it. yeah. So it's just abuse. Surgency. Ah, crazy. Well, Randy, All right, man. good luck to you. Thank you very much. It's Thank you. Yes. Yeah. We'll see you back at the shop and goodbye. And good luck on your trip to Nome. Thank you. Enjoy it. <laughs> it's cool. RV to Alaska. <laughs> so Leah is who I am uh, rooting for. She's my my pick. What about you? I yeah, sure. She's pretty. <laughs> pretending to be an iron dogger. <laughs> well, we've made it out to the Iron Dog Trail. This is the same place that uh, we watched from last year. Today is just the expedition start. So this is uh, a class of um, teams that are more than two people. And some of them of them are only going to Nome. Here comes Gary again. Some are only going to Nome and some are making the whole loop and coming back here to Big Lake. Uh, absolutely amazing uh it's gorgeous today we had a night of aurora last Ooh. night that's just me pretending <laughs> you got beard sickles i bet i do <laughs> have fun pretending yeah what'd you hit huh what'd you hit oh i didn't look i was watching the trail <laughs> <laughs> yeah is it pretty beat up it's not bad. Just a corner. All right, Gary's going to try again. He's going to pretend he's an iron dogger. Who knows? The way that I see how much Gary loves this sport, I could see him trying to do this sometime. 
But uh, yeah, it's like 1,400 miles one way to Nome and uh, the return trip in all, if they do the extra loop out in the bush uh, north of Nome, it is like 2,600 miles. Going through the bumps. <laughs> What a beautiful day it is out here. <laughs> oh, this is our backyard. This is our home. The sunshine. Sunshine is amazing. It's this hurting be, my eye. I, I meant great. to pack my sunglasses and I yeah. forgot them. We're expecting to start in five to six minutes. And uh, it'll take them five to six minutes to get here. So, uh, well, a few minutes. Well, it depends on how fast they're going. These guys aren't necessarily... No, these guys aren't... They're not, they're not for speed, but... They this, still... This, this is a beautiful day. They have a long way to go. It's the first leg of the run, and they're going to be kind of booking it, I think. And the trails are nice. The trails are nice right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. It is 11.04, so that means two teams have been released. Well, 11, 11.02. Three teams have been released. And believe it or not, I think we can hear them from our vantage point. I'm melting my beard tickle. <laughs> Yeah. There it goes. It's all gone. Okay, there we go. Ah. So <laughs> they should be here in a few minutes. Um, we are the only ones out here. Kind of surprised. This will be different on Friday when right. we come back out for the pro class. Those are all the professionals that go zoom, zoom, zoom. So, well, yeah, there's two different classes. There's the pro class, which is the race, the racers, the fast guys, the sponsored guys and all that. Then there's the expedition class, which is a group of people that you can get a team together of two to four or five people, I think it is. I saw one uh, team with six. Maybe six. And you can ride together um, kind of at your own pace, but still you got to be there by a certain time. Um, and it's not, a, it's not a race. It's just a, a, a a ride that you can do uh, follow, following the Iron Dog Trail. It's kind of a cool thing. Um, I might be interested in doing that in a couple of years. Um, so, yeah. I had just mentioned that. We'll I see. could see you doing that. Yeah. And I, I know we got other friends who might want to do it too. So, who knows? Well, we'll see. Maybe if I uh, bump up my speeds a little bit more. Hey! You hit 60? I hit over 60 today. Over 60? Over 60. Woo, you get it. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I'll have to check my uh, GPS stats after this ride, but. I know I hit 86. <laughs> but on my, on my passes through here, it was like underneath the bridge, like 75, 76 miles an hour. Crazy. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, turn the camera back on once they start headed this direction. All right, it is 11 12, and I see yep. our first yeah, racers. Our first racers coming around the quarter way back there. There's a S curve. You can so see them coming through the trees. Yeah, yeah they're going pretty good. There's how the group looks like. Look at all the lights they have on their machine. It's amazing. They ride for as long as they can. There they go. Start of the Iron Dog. It has begun. Expedition class. Team 77. Here, there's a bunch of them coming. Oh, wow, look how Keep it going. Uh, yeah, keep it going. Team 77. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, careful. 73. Team 73. Yeah, they're doing pretty good. They're doing it. So that's all one team. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, the first one, there's three teams right there, I think. I got three teams. I don't know. Kind of hard. We're not directly underneath them to see their numbers. Well, but... I see them coming around the corner. Yeah. Pretty cool. So they took off in two minute intervals. They took off in two minute intervals and they've all caught up to each other. All the teams have caught up to each other. So I mean, there's obviously faster riders and slower riders and this and that. So. You know, it's not, it, it's, it's not a race, but it's still 
a race. It's still competitive. It'd be a race for me. You're boys. Uh, You're always competitive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Even with me riding with you, I try to be competitive to myself and, well, and you should. do Take, something yeah. new and each time. Each time you go out, you should try something new. Try something. I do have to say, I absolutely love snow machining. I never thought how much I would love this sport. And it's, it's it's kind of freedom. It's kind of getting out here, just seeing nature and, and the beauty, and, and 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 you are at the control of it. Yeah, and like I said, today I hit my top speed ever, and I'm pretty proud of that. It's still a little scary, but today the conditions are just oh, so nice. Oh yeah, the trails aren't really beat up. There's fresh, good layer of about mm -hmm. ten uh, inches to yes, a foot, something like that. That's oh, great. I hear more yeah. machines, so we'll flip it around. You can always see a headlight of a snow machine. Yep, the headlights are always really bright. This is just the start of their journey. They're going to Nome. It's over a thousand mile run to Nome. Could you imagine that? Doing a, a snow machine ride for a thousand miles? The equipment you have to carry, the logistics that have to happen, which is really nice, actually. There's another one off in the distance, but um, there's lodges and and trail houses set up all along the way. And checkpoints. And checkpoints, and they stay overnight in these checkpoints. Another team. Here we go. Get it. Get on there. Fifty-one. Yay! Woo! That's Randy right there. This should be the last group of the expedition class. The slow goes. Going to Nome. Going to Nome. Big run. Team 69. Yep. <laughs> and they are slow go. I think the tracker shows one other rider, but they're still at the start line. Must have had a malfunction. They must have had to scratch at the last yeah, moment. That happens. Machines do weird things sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So. We gotta go take off and play, I think. I think we get to play now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Love it. It's a beautiful day. Oh, man. It's not too terribly cold. No, it's not. It's not. It's, uh, when we wear our helmets, degrees. it's even warmer, so. Yeah. Switch out our hats. 15 or 20 degrees, maybe. Not probably like that. I don't know. I didn't was, look. I think it was 12 when we left home. I didn't look this morning when we got up. All right. Well, we're going to hit the trail. Uh, we're going to do this again on Friday with the pro class. We'll have a larger group of people with us, too. Yeah, we'll we won't more, be the only the ones here. Uh -huh. um, you know, I'm sure those guys uh, appreciated having someone cheering them on. Uh, we saw lots of fist bumps, and that was a lot of cool. So. All right, let's go for a ride. Today, 67 miles per hour. Awesome. Well, 
good morning. It's Iron Dog Pro Start Day. <clears throat> Today is Friday, February 17th, and Gary and I are about to join our friends and ride out to the Iron Dog Trail and watch the start. Here we are, another day. You can tell the weather has changed a bit. We have a low cloud deck and a snow forecasted for all day into tomorrow. But one to four inches today and a couple inches tonight. So we're getting some snow. And you know what today is? Iron Dog Day Pro Class. We're here on the bridge overlooking, or, uh, overlooking the course right here. They're gonna snake through some S turns and pin it underneath the bridge and we'll be able to see them go off into the trees behind us. As you can see, we have company yep. today. Quite a few people here today. Already, we're still 25 minutes to the start. Yep. That's our, our group, our down, group there. down there. We decided to come over on the bridge again and get a good spot. We cleared off a nice spot yep. for all of us. Perfect. Here's Ms. Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi. All right, it is 10.02, so that means two teams have already been relate, released. Right, from the start. From the start and making their way over here. We figure it'll take them about 10 minutes right. since Pro Class took about 15. These guys are gonna be faster, that is for sure. Yep. And uh, the snow conditions are a little bit different today. The light's more flat, so it's more difficult to see stuff. Um, but that's not gonna hurt these guys. They're just gonna go, they pin it to win it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. This is. You, exactly, pin it to win it. I hear them out there. They're out in those trees right there. It's like 10.06, 10.07, so they're they're right on time, maybe oh, a little bit earlier than we thought. Yeah, I said about 10, 10 after. 10, yeah. So we'll be able to see their headlights through the trees when they come around in these S turns. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just a few minutes away. I hear them. Yeah. Yep, orange helmets, two riders. This is Palin. This is Todd Palin and his partner. Oh, he took the straight shot. Yes, Peter. and it's that Palin. Sarah Palin's oh. ex-husband. So who I'm rooting for is Leah Bauer, and she is team 13, lucky number 13, and their position is 10th on the start today. So it should so, be a 10, 20 or so start? 10, 20 would be when her start is. So Leah and Jake will be starting their 2023 run, and we right. wish them the best of luck. Absolutely. Last awesome year, decision. they didn't have as good a luck they uh, had to scratch due to Leah's sled burning up. Literally nothing left. Nothing. Gone. So um, we are really rooting that they finish this year and right. they finish well. Mm -hmm. So good luck, Leah and Jake. The finishing as you, is just an accomplishment. As you so, start, yeah. and we'll be here about 10 minutes away cheering you on as you go by. Right. Coming around the corner. Yep, big old S turns. <laughs> It's 1028 and I see Leah and Jake, they're coming around there right now. Bright. Oh yeah, there's those pink skis. Woohoo! Wow. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Go Leah! Woo! Woohoo! <laughs> Jake, I think, was in the lead. Woo! <laughs> That was Leah and Jake, and yeah. I wish them the best. I sure do too. And I boy, hope. their sleds pop. Oh, those, those, those <laughs> seats glow. Oh my gosh, you can see them from here. 
a mile before the headlights. <laughs> right? Well, she said that they wanted to be seen if they needed to be seen. That's true. <laughs> yeah. They accomplished it. They did. Great. All They're right. Good luck. luck, guys. Yeah. Yeah. There's Danny right there on the bear cap. Hello. She wants to go. Tim, I know Tim. Hi, Waylon! Look at your little red nose. Look at that little helmet, that's awesome. <laughs> he said he's ready to race. He wants to paint it orange. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Did you ride with Papa the whole way? Yeah. Yeah. You shared, you shared a little bit. Yeah, mostly with Papa though. <laughs> Good job, Waylon. Yeah. Good job, Wayland. Well, it's 10:53. All teams are now on the trail. They have left the starting line, and I believe we only have two more teams to come by. Uh, our uh, point on the trail, I think we're about 10 miles into the race. So we are about to wrap it up here at the start of the Iron Dog 2023, the world's longest, toughest snowmobile race. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be tracking them all week and maybe I'll uh, bring updates uh, from the computer and show you what's going on throughout the week. And we might try to come out to the finish line uh, next week. So we'll just have to wait and see. Hope you enjoyed uh, this year's coverage of the Iron Dog. And uh, I know we had a blast. All right, team number 28. I believe there's one more team after this. Here they are, the last team. Woo! Bring it up the red! Well, that's it. All the teams have gone by us. They're on their way to Nome, and we'll uh, follow them throughout the week. I got Ken Thanks again for watching as we catch up the vlog to real time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified when we post again. And lastly, we hope you'll join us again next time here on Living Free Alaska.